This video covers Power SDR 2.8.0.18, and uh, it's covering the, the new scanner feature over here. But at first, I want to go into the spotting for just a second. I've got the uh, spotter turned on, and here's a list of um, the uh, URLs for the DX clusters with a colon and a port number after it. See, and I've got multiple, and you can click on here double click in here and you can add more up to like 10 and you can change these the ones that are already here uh, so you don't have to live with the ones that are in here but the one that's highlighted is the one when you when you click on the DX spot that's going to open it up and so right now we're spotting now when I, I'm also putting my memories into the pan adapter and and you can see that I'm not the, the, this area here, this red area here, is, is the bandpass. If I want to move this uh, this frequency here, which is in my memories, which has a filter and a mode uh, pre-selected, you know, it's all set up in the memories. If I put my cursor over there and I click to make sure Power SDR is in focus, which means that this is darkened up here on this top line. So I click, so I'm in focus, and I hit the control key. That moves me that moves that memory into the bandpass and sets up the filters over here and the, the filter in the mode according to what I had saved it as. Well, uh, I've got some, uh, I, I made some changes to the, uh, the DX spotting and one of them is in this case here, you got this, uh, this guy over here. Now you might have quite a few, uh, it, during a contest, you could have 50 spots in this list, and you'd never be able to find 5U5R on the list. But now, if you uh, see right now, Power SDR is not in focus. This this top line is white. So I click on the 5U5R just to get a, a 5U5R to get it in focus. And if I hit the control key, that puts 5U5R. Uh, not only in the bandpass, but it sets the mode according to what it can parse out. So it figured, well, he's in the uh, the CW portion, so it put it into the CW mode. So it stuck us in CW mode uh, and moved him in. And now I can still, if I if I, it, it highlights him in this list too. So that way, if you have a long list, you can find him, and then that way you can see, you know, your angle. Uh, the rotor angle if you want to move your rotor and so forth but I can still right click on this blue line here and, and open up a QRZ page but I can also do it from up here uh, again I have to be in focus and if I um, hit the control key and right click uh, then that will bring up the QRZ page as well I just right click on my mouse uh, after power stairs and focus I hit the control key and then right click and that'll bring that up and as before, if I uh, uh, if I put my mouse over the last letter and I hit the control key while power stairs in focus, that will actually issue the, the rotor command and in this case would move it to 80 degrees from my location. So that's uh, that's the change uh, in the uh, DX spotter is that not only can you you know click on the, the red dots over here, but now you can actually move that person right here, this CG3KI, just by putting your mouse over, putting power steer in focus, and hitting the control key moves him, and now he's he's now in focus, and then highlights him in the uh, in the in the band. And remember, if you hit the shift key. Uh, that'll put all the spotters up on the screen rather than the spotted so I'm now I'm seeing all the spotters now back to the spotted so anyway the uh, scanner function uh, the scanner function now there's there are uh, uh, four ways to scan the original way was just a low and high frequency when I when I change bands it puts the low and the high edge of the band in there and you can use your step and the speed and hit the hit the button it'll start to uh, scan and you want to you want to um, make sure you set your squelch level so that uh, um, it will stop the scan if somebody breaks the squelch. If the if this green line exceeds the the, the knob here, if it exceeds negative 99, then uh, if it's a stronger signal, then uh, it will stop the scan. Well, memory here. This goes into my list of memories, which I've got 
quite a few I've got the the view option for the 5000 so I've got repeaters and things in here and the group name uh, is what's key here and this parses out all the unique group names it doesn't duplicate them it just parses out all the unique names and I've got some Mars frequencies here let's say but I can click on this and it'll load up my Mars frequencies but I can also just type it in uh, and as I type in it's it's doing a partial Mars so now it's doing anything with Mars if I add in the ALE now it's only showing me one frequency because it narrowed the search so uh, I can also do uh, repeaters and uh, you know, so I, I may have I may have repeaters with just the name repeater somewhere in the group name, you know, or uh, you know, or I, I can change the group name any way I want, and uh, makes it a little more uh, effective. But uh, if I just want to do, let's say, ALE frequencies, so these are all my ALE frequencies, and this is the speed at which it's going to step. And when I hit that, it turns green, and it'll start to uh, scan every two seconds. And I've got it set for pause on squelch break. So if if there's a strong signal here, it's succeeding the squelch, then it will break, and it'll pause for, in this case, five seconds. I can change that to zero, which means it would just simply pause forever. It would just stop. Pause, this turns yellow when it's on pause mode. Otherwise, it just, it just keeps going around, robbing around and around and around. And then I hit this again to stop it. Now also I can do band stack. So I can go into the band I want to go in. And I've got a band stack. Now of course I can right click up here. If I right click it opens up my band stack panel. And I can add, sort, delete. But if I click on this it will load up all those uh, saved band memories. And then now it will go around and it will tell me this, you know, whatever I had the squelch level set at. In this case, negative 78 dBm, and then what the signal was, the actual signal, and whether or not I broke the squelch. And again, it uses the pause on squelch if I uh, if I want to uh, actually pause it. I can turn that off so it just keeps going no matter what, or turn that back on to have it pause if the squelch is broke. So it just goes around robin. And again, turn that off. Now, this custom list, the last way to uh, when you when you click on that, it'll open up a folder. It makes a subfolder called custom scan list off of your uh, database folder. And then uh, I've got this example file in here, and I can right click on that and I can do uh, edit if you want to just open that up in Notepad. And what it is is just give it a name, comma. Frequency in megahertz, so like 8.5 megahertz, comma, the mode, uh, in this case USB, comma, the filter. And all these filters over here start with F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. So, And then you, you compose a list of, of all these different ones. I just kind of randomly put some stuff in. So you select that file and you hit open. And then that puts those in this list. And then start scanning. Same thing, pause on squelch, you know, the whole thing. If, and then you hit it again to turn it off. So if you hold your mouse over this, it'll it'll show you all the different... I, I can't move my mouse when I do this, but it's showing you the list of filters and modes that are available that you can put in that custom list if you want to make a custom text list rather than going through the memories and creating all these memories. But, uh, but like for repeaters, I can put... I can go in here and I can uh, either search for repeaters or, uh, in this case, or 10 meter repeaters. These are the two 10 meter repeaters, but I can I can get rid of the the 10 meter and just do repeaters, and then it'll add all the repeaters I've got in there. And then that will, if I hit the memory start, it'll just start to uh, scan through all the repeaters. You just have to make sure you set your squelch correctly. And that is it.